So let's look at the autonomic innervation of the heart. And the heart has its own intrinsic conduction system, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the autonomic innervation coming from the outside. You can call it extrinsic if you want to. Well, that's what I call it. And you can call this uh, the intrinsic conduction system of the heart. So we're looking at how the autonomic innervation can exert a control and change the heart rate or the heart beating from the outside. And that's going to happen through sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. With parasympathetic, we're looking really only at cranial nerve 10, vagus nerve. And with sympathetic, we're looking at cervical and thoracic cardiac nerves. Parasympathetic innervation will act to decrease the heart rate, and we'll get into more detail about that, whereas sympathetic will act to increase heart rate. So let's look at cranial nerve 10, and we have to start in the medulla. So I have a transverse section of the medulla here, and just generally to put, uh, put it in place, here we have the dorsal motor nucleus of vagus where most of the, the fibers will come that are parasympathetic to the heart. And there's also nucleus ambiguous, which isn't shown in this section. And the dorsal motor nucleus. So those are the two nuclei for cranial nerve 10 that are going to act as parasympathetic to the heart. If you want to compare it to this picture over here, you can see the vagus nerve exiting the medulla, just as you see there. And I want to bring up the point that <coughs> cranial nerve 10 is going to be a part of a greater formation of nuclei in the medulla, referred to as the cardiac control centers. And what these, center, these centers do is they take in sensory information and they can send out motor signals through cranial nerve 10 to affect the heart rate. Uh, a good example of this is um, an increase in blood pressure can stimulate cranial nerve 10, indicated by this X, which will act to decrease heart rate. And then that'll come full circle now and decrease blood pressure and return it to normal. So it's really a cyclical homeostatic mechanism to maintain heart rate and blood pressure. We can also see that um, too much stimulation of cranial nerve 10 will lead to bradycardia. And you can also check out the sympathetic innervation. You can say that uh, decreased blood pressure will stimulate the sympathetic nerves and that will act to increase the heart rate and come full circle and return the blood pressure back up to normal. So too much stimulation of the sympathetic nerves will lead to tachycardia or too quick of a heartbeat. So following cranial nerve 10 down we can see it exiting from the brain stem descending in the neck before making its way over to these things called the cardiac plexuses. So here I have uh, the arch of the aorta and the bifurcation of the trachea and that's where the cardiac plexuses lie. So we have two of them. Here's a superficial cardiac plexus and here's a deep cardiac plexus. And as cranial nerve 10 descends in the neck, it's going to send off branches into these cardiac plexuses. So right now it's preganglionic as it's descending. And now it's giving off branches into the cardiac plexuses. It'll synapse here and then send down small branches to the heart, which is very close nearby. And they'll finally synapse there. And I'm indicating just in my schematic here, just individual axons, but really there's a multitude of these fibers traveling down to form nerves. Also, cranial nerve 10 has other functions in the thorax, which I'm not going to get to.
and it'll descend all the way down into the abdomen where it does stuff there. <clears throat> so that's really the essence of cranial nerve 10 descending all the way from the medulla down to the cardiac plexuses and then working its way over to the heart where it is parasympathetic viscera motor. So now let's look at the sympathetic innervation to the heart and to do that we have to check out this transverse section of the thoracic spinal cord. So T1 to T4 are the segments of the spinal cord from which the sympathetic motor fibers originate. So you have this lateral horn of the gray matter which is unique to the thoracic region and that's where the sympathetic fibers originate and they will send out fibers through the ventral horn, the ventral roots, and that'll meet up on the other side with fibers from the dorsal horn. Keep in mind there's other stuff coming on here that I'm not talking about motor and, and sensory and stuff. So when all that comes together, you have a, a mixed spinal nerve. And I just want to point out dorsal primary rami and ventral primary rami because the sympathetic fibers will not go through those rami. They will just skip out and go to this thing called a sympathetic chain. Or this round structure is the sympathetic ganglion. And those ganglions are all connected throughout the cervical region and actually the entire down to the pelvic region, um, they're made up of these ganglion from sympathetic fibers. So <clears throat> right here, this is a preganglionic because it hasn't synapsed yet in the ganglion. Preganglionic, it's white and it's myelinated. And you can call it a, a white uh, rami communicans. Here we had the dorsal primary rami and the ventral primary rami, and those aren't going to the heart, so we don't need to discuss them. Anyways, here's our sympathetic fiber, and once it gets into the ganglion, it can synapse there, and then send a fiber back out, making its way over to cardiac plexuses, in similar fashion to the vagus nerve. And they will synapse there, and then send their fibers on down to the heart. But these nerves going over to the cardiac plexuses, they are post-ganglionic. So, when the sympathetic fibers get into the ganglion, they can, in addition to synapsing at the same level, they can also ascend before they synapse, going into cervical ganglia. So let's pretend here that this is the superior cervical ganglion. And from it we would have uh, the superior cervical cardiac nerve. And that would be coming down here, making its way over to the cardiac plexus. and I've skipped out here, there should be a couple more ganglia here that I've left out, but you can use your imagination and say we also would have a, a middle and an inferior cervical cardiac nerves, and those would be coming from other ganglia. So there's a multitude of sympathetic fibers traveling over to the cervical plex uh, the cardiac plexuses. Um, another option for the sympathetic fibers to descend before synapsing and then also post they would send postganglionic fibers over to the cardiac plexus so you might wonder why they're taking all these kinds of detours and there's a couple answers to that question uh, the first one would be ascending fibers seem to be going in the wrong direction but initially during development our heart in the embryonic stage was in our cervical region before it descended. So that would explain this. And another question to ask is why do these fibers even bother going through the ganglion? And the answer to that is that um, when the fibers enter they're going to be synapsing and this is sort of a regulatory event because you can even have interneurons, 
or you can have dendritic connections between between the two dendrites of these sympathetic fibers. So altogether, it's really going to determine uh, will an action potential occur? Will a message be sent down these postganglionic fibers? Uh, will the heart be stimulated by these sympathetic fibers? And that's a, a summation of all these excitatory, inhibitory uh, signals through temporal and spatial summation. So if you look at the um, thoracic sympathetics, you'll find out that we have four thoracic cardiac nerves. So, altogether now we have a bunch of fibers coming down to the heart and when they synapse at the heart they're going to synapse in the epicardium and the myocardium and they're going to be distributed all the way from the atria to the ventricles so they're really coming all the way through the heart up and down and they're not limited to just the SA or AV node areas they're spreading out all over the place <clears throat> so what are these fibers doing when they get there and we mentioned earlier that uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic had two totally contrasting functions parasympathetic will act to decrease heart rate also decrease force of contractility and it's going to be using the neurotransmitter acetylcholine on the other hand, sympathetic is going to act to increase heart rate, increase force of contractility, and it will use the neurotransmitter, neurotransmitter norepinephrine. So a good question to ask is, what happens when you lose all of these nerves? And you can see that in a heart transplantation. When you transplant the heart, you lose all of the autonomic innervation and it's called denervated denervated and I've included some links to discuss what will happen and the heart does have its intrinsic uh, conduction system so it can continue to beat but it's not going to behave the same way as before due to the fact that we lost all of this regulatory control